Hey, I, I really love this film, and I'm real right. impressed with the film, but I'm, I'm curious. We'll go out and buy two or 3,000 tickets on Friday night. Well, you know, I'm kind of a wealthy guy. I like it. <laughs> In the grand scheme of playing heavies, because there's a whole history of heavies, but you You're also... You're saying I'm fat? No, okay. I'm saying I'm saying uh, the Brits in general are heavies right. in this situation. Then you have a heavy upon a heavy. But um, well, Brits are the enemy. You know, you have, the thing yeah. about British people playing bad guys in movies is you got to be the bad guy in a film about the American Revolution. Mm -hmm. It's a given. So it's not a cliche. You know, we have to be the enemy. No, but I did save the world in Armageddon. It, absolutely, because you were a bright guy in that. I was one. the smartest man on the planet. I wasn't just bright. And you're a smart guy in this one, but with a major attitude. I've got a job to do. I think if you were reading the reports in the Times in England of Tavington's victories, you'd be rather proud of me. It's just mm. uh, I have a slightly different perspective in America. And the, uh, the Brits do have a real, do they have a real different, and you're not, not you have to speak for the whole country, but Phew. they do, but you are. But uh, is there a whole different perspective on the American Revolution? Well, uh, I don't know that, I, you know what, I don't think we were ever, when I was at school, I don't think it even came up. I don't think it was on the syllabus. I don't think we covered it. It's not, just not important. It's a blip, you know. Uh, uh, if we did cover it, we were probably told that we won. They would have glossed it over. Yeah. Well, they would have glossed it over. Just there's a lot of history. When you study American history, you've only got a couple of hundred years of modern American history. You right. study English history, you know. Where do you start? You have to pick a section. I think I did. Um, I did the last century when I was at school, and the uh, American Revolution just didn't occur. You know, the, the people might know more about the Dallas television series than they do about the American Revolution. That's true. In England. That's true. No, we, we, I knew nothing about it before I started doing this film, and now obviously I know um, even less. Um, did you find did you find in the making of this film that you had delicious moments? Yeah, it was the whole thing was a, a delight. In fact, I'd forgotten how much fun it was until I saw the screening the other night, and uh, it just came back to me. It was like your favorite your favorite summer when you were a kid or something. You know, I had this flood of nostalgia watching the film, which was nothing to do with what was going on on screen. I was sitting there wishing that they'd lost the negative and we could shoot it all again. I mean, it was a dream job to have for, for all of us, I think. You know, we're in beautiful countryside, we're on horses, you know, and we're playing out these kids' fantasy battles, you know, huge epic battles going on around us, and, uh, and it, it doesn't get any more fun. It, movies a lot of times are big and earnest and don't work, where this is huge, earnest, smart, and does work. What's the difference? The difference is... Well, you know, it's, it's a very, uh, in, a lot of intangibles that come together making a film, but even when you have every element great, things can turn out badly. But, you know, the script was a great script. Bob Rodak tells a great story. He's built some great characters. And, and also Roland as a director and Dean as his producer, and they work very closely together to make sure that there is an atmosphere of, this is going to sound weird, but I mean it, of free play on the set so that you feel that you can collaborate. And, you know, it, although it was an epic, undertaking it was a huge industrial sized thing it actually felt like when I used to devise plays with people to take to the Edinburgh Festival you know it felt creative which is a tribute to them they, they can you know, make, create this atmosphere um, and where you can forget all the rest of it and it was you and Mel or me and Mel and Heath or whoever it is and Roland and Dean in on a discussion you you can make moments happen and it's not you don't have to fit an agenda because you know we've got to get these 500 people over here and we've already mm -hmm. set up that crane shot and, you know, you'd make the scenes work. and So you've got to have a great script, and you've got to have actors who are properly cast, you know, so they're right for the part, and they understand their parts. And then you, ultimately you've got to get there and throw everything out the window and see what can we do to make the scene work on the day. Yeah, by the time you show up, you need to be prepared. And you need John Williams as well, obviously. Isn't always. that great? Yeah. Isn't that great? There's another, that's a whole other level with him. Isn't and it? John Williams and horses. And, and fanfares. Like, no, who was it said, give me a girl and a gun, I'll give you a movie. Yeah, absolutely. We've got muskets and horses. Now, um, are you are you the kind of actor that gets lost in the moment when you put it in the right situation? Is that what you're working for? Well, what you're working for is, because all acting is just tricks of the imagination, you know, to believe as much as you possibly can that you're there in the moment. And the things that help you are Kurt's brilliant sets, you know, and uh, the feeling that no one's criticizing you. So the director will allow you to do whatever you want. You're not going to do something that's going to go, what the hell were you doing? Which sometimes happens. So these guys are incredibly encouraging. But most of all, you want the other actor to be in the moment. Because when you look in their eyes, if they're in the scene and they're in the moment, it does 80% of it for you. And so it was one of the great things about working with Mel. You know, he's, he might be this big global superstar, but he's also a fantastic actor. And you look at him and he's playing the scene. And that isn't always the case. You know, first of all, he's there for all your close-ups, which isn't always the case either. But he's there in the scene, meaning that if he's meant to be scared of you, he's scared of you. You look in someone's eyes and they're scared of you. You feel powerful. You know? And uh, so 
yeah, I, it's not so much getting lost in the moment. It's trying to fool yourself and forget all the rest of the stuff that's going on and how great the smell of the lunch that's coming over the field is and, <laughs> you know, and the fact that this hat's killing you. And uh, Craft service. And the other actor does it for you. Yeah, very nice film. Yeah, very Thanks proud of you.